Welcome back to another episode of History in Your Own Backyard. I'm your host, Susie Selleck. Today we are in Glenwood, Indiana, and we're at the Glenwood United Methodist Church. I am joined by Diane Med. Diane, thank you so much for having us here today. Thank you, and glad to have you here, and I hope this is very informational for everyone. I think that it will be, and actually, I love where we are sitting right now. The lighting in here is beautiful. These stained glass windows are beautiful, which we'll get into. But I wanted to ask you, when was the first uh, United Methodist Church organized here in Glenwood? Well, Glenwood was platted in 1832 uh, by Samuel Durbin and John Morris and Jesse Helms. Okay. And the church was then, uh, Samuel Durbin donated, he and his wife donated uh, the land to the Methodist Church in 1840. Uh, at the time, it was called Vienna, mm -hmm. and then it was Vienna for a short time, and then it became steel, but it, then it went back to Vienna. And then uh, that's when we planted the church in 1840. That's when the first, they, and they met in homes of, of people at that point in time. Oh. So um, a lot of the families still live here in town. Uh, a lot of the, their descendants still live here in town. Yeah. So. Diane, can you tell us when the land here was deeded? I believe it was in 1840. Uh, the lot to the east of the church was the the, the first one that was deeded, uh, and that was deeded in 1840 uh, by Samuel Durbin and his wife. They deeded it to the church. Now I don't know whether they just gave the land to the church or the church had to buy. It. I don't know that. Okay. But that's when it was that deeded. Was the year. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Diane, the present building that we're in now. Do you know when that was built? Who the contractors were? It was built in 1920 okay. by the Stam brothers, which is an old family in town, and they were the contractors. And I think it was like $10,000. And uh, so that's how much it cost to build this church. Wow. $10,000. So when we were touring earlier, you had talked about some people who had built some things downstairs, mm -hmm. kind of, uh, you want to talk about that? Uh, yes, uh, Donnie Foreman, uh, who is, a really good contractor. Really good. He's a retired fireman also. He has built the cabinets downstairs in the uh, dining room. Mm -hmm. Then he also built the cross over here, made the cross here. And then in the back Sunday school room, there's another beautiful cross he has built. Oh, the cross up here is beautiful. Yeah. And when he, when one of our ministers retired, Phil Mitchell, he made him a beautiful bookcase. And so Donnie has done lots of work here. Oh, uh, well, the work that I've seen is magnificent. I'm sure he does other great work mm -hmm. as well. Yes. Now, we were talking also earlier about these big, beautiful, massive, gorgeous stained glass windows. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about those? Um, you, you had actually mentioned a little bit of weather issue. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk about that? And then let's talk about the price. <laughs> yeah. The windows are beautiful and they are to the, when the church was built, that's when they were put in. Uh, they do get a lot of weather. The west ones especially get a lot of weather. So we had to have them repaired uh, and put um, like a glass on the outside to protect them. And I think that was probably maybe five, six years ago. And if, in my mind, I think it probably cost $16,000 per window to get them done. Sounds about right, yeah. looks about right. I, yeah, and it was very time consuming for the, we had to have a company from Iowa come and do it because I don't think there's that many that do that kind of work. Right out front of the church is this beautiful bell. Uh, was it always there? Did that come from somewhere else? No, it was in the belfry, uh, but we've always had a water leak. So they took it down and one of the families of the church, uh, when their parents passed away, they built the, they had the bell put in out there and in and, uh, and memory of Lillian, uh, Ernie and Lillian Cox. Does, so, Does the bell still ring sometimes? Yes, it will ring. Okay. Yeah. I've always wished we had enough, I, I keep thinking we should probably ring it on Sunday morning, but no one does. Well, you today, know. you know, today's Saturday, I might give it a ring Yeah, go right ahead. If you don't mind. No, okay. go right ahead. Yeah. <laughs> thing with bells. Yeah. There's a beautiful section right behind, I guess, the pulpit, and mm -hmm. that looks like maybe there's room for a choir. Uh, yes, there was a choir there. Uh, hasn't been one in quite a few years, but uh, we didn't use it anymore, and so we took it out. And uh, 
it looks, uh, we use it especially at Christmas time because we put our Christmas trees up there. We have a Jesus Christmas tree and a regular Christmas tree. Oh. And the kids decorate it. And the Jesus Christmas tree only has things on it that pertain to Christmas. Uh, you don't put a Santa Claus on a, on a Jesus tree. So I love that. But it is, uh, it's a white, white Christmas tree. And the other one is a uh, green Christmas tree. Oh, that's very so, unique. But yeah, the choirs we used to have, I guess, uh, ever since I've been going here, which has been a, quite a few years, we've never had a choir. But in the 30s and 40s, I guess they did have a, a nice choir. Okay. Yeah. Now, the, the pews that we're sitting in right now, is there a significance to the color? Because I, I, I think that there's a lot of United Methodist churches that I've been in where I've seen more of a red tone. Is, did you guys p like pick whiter colors more specifically? Uh, you know, Speaking I of the white Christmas tree? No, I don't even know why they picked the, the oatmeal colors. Okay. Uh, maybe because of the walls. I, I, we covered them, I think, in the 70s. Okay. But, right. uh, you know, the pews are original to the church again. They've been, Donnie has really done a lot of work to keep them maintained. Looking beautiful. Yeah. And... Uh, because we have sit, I've sit in some church pews that are not very comfortable. These are very comfortable. They are. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> but why we picked this color, I can't answer that. I, I mean, it does the church a, just a, a beautiful justice mm -hmm. to the, the, the purity and, mm -hmm. and all that. But yeah. uh, so I wasn't sure if that's part of it or okay. No, just, well, the, just the color. It looks great. It really looks really mm -hmm. good with the windows. Yeah. Uh, downstairs, you guys have kept. I was wondering if there was a reception party or something happening, but you said no. What? Can you talk to that? Jerry Stam, who takes care of the church for us and who goes here, she likes, she's got a very good artistic taste and she always keeps the tables ready. And if, it, and she changes the color in the seasons, you know, in the fall we have fall colors and in the spring we have the spring colors, uh, summer and in winter she, at Christmas time we have Christmas colors and she will change the flowers and everything. But she's very artistic that way. Oh, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. So of the two Sunday school rooms that I saw downstairs, one of those you guys use for storage to be able to take things to what, there's a mission that you yes, guys down, support? Down in Kentucky, the mm -hmm. Mountain Mission Home. Okay. It, uh, it's not a home, it, they are homes. And they come up usually once a quarter mm -hmm. and they will load up their trucks. And they come to almost all the Methodist churches in this area. Really? Mm -hmm. That's yes. great. And even down in around Sunman, they come in, I think Sunman. And so they have a pretty full load when they leave to go back to Kentucky. Oh, that's wonderful that you use the, the room for yeah. that. Now, mm -hmm. to the other side of it, that's a Sunday school room. Is that is that used every Sunday mm -hmm. for what age group? Well, no, it's not anymore. Okay. It used okay. to be, but we don't have a lot of youth here, young people. Okay, all um, right and young children. All right, so that's probably going to go with the playground outside. So so we've got things available for, yes, the, for the right. younger if generation. They come, if it's they here. Come, it's here. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, anything that you guys do with the rest of the space around that, you know, it, this stretches out for miles, it looks like, behind us at the farmland? It, no, that belongs to somebody else. Okay, all right, so and it's private. And over to the right here, beside the garage, we used to have a parsonage. Okay. Um, when we had full-time ministers, they would use the parsonage. Uh, in the Methodist church, I don't know if you're aware of it, but they usually, unless you're in a bigger city, they usually serve two churches. Yes. Yeah, and so we, at this point in time, are connected to New Salem. We haven't had a full-time minister in a while, so we quit using the parsonage, and we rented it out for a while, but had a hard time keeping good renters in it. Right. And it was getting to the point it was hard to maintain. Okay. So we tore it down about seven or eight years ago. Gotcha. So, that makes sense. But it, uh, so we have a nice, uh, nice yard though. The organs in here, I see that there's two, but um, are they both used? One is an organ and one is a piano. I stand corrected. So we have <laughs> both. We are lucky because there's not many churches anymore that have actually have an organ player, a musician, and a piano musician. It doesn't happen a lot. The divider that's here, uh, what was that once used for? Well, it's an overflow. Okay. So if you, if, the, if you had a full congregation and a full 
no place else for them to sit. Whole house, yeah. They would open those up, and there was chairs back there that they could sit. Okay. So now, but now it is used as a Sunday school room, and they've dropped the ceilings down to kind of help with the heat. Okay. Yeah, I noticed that with the with the stained glass, it looked like mm -hmm. it was cut off by the mm -hmm. ceiling halfway. Okay. Yeah. So for efficiency, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Right. Uh huh. Um, and it looks, it absolutely looks beautiful. Well, so. it's, I think if if you used it for an overflow, it wouldn't look so good. But since we don't use it for an overflow, it's, yeah. it would be nice if we did, <laughs> but we don't. Well, for what you're using it for, yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah. So is there anything that we haven't talked about that you absolutely love? Because I, the one thing that I thought that was very significant is you have a, a wooden plaque of the Lord's Prayer. Can you talk about that? Was that a gift? Was that made for the church? That was given in memory of uh, Calvin Beaver, okay. who was 101 years, I think 101 years old. Yeah. And his family still goes to church here. Really? And so they gave that in memory of, of him. Oh. Um, on the table back there, there's some pictures, and there's a picture of, the, of his five generations. And so, yeah. You weren't kidding. No. There's was, yeah. lots of the family members yeah, are still oh, here yes, today. Yes, there is lots. That's great. And Glenwood itself was then renamed Glenwood back in the late 1800s. Vienna went away and became Glenwood. So uh, that's when it became Glenwood United, well, Glenwood Methodist Episcopal Church at the time. Oh, okay, so it's it's more, but now here we are, uh, yes. Glenwood United yes. Methodist Church. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Now, I have noticed that there is something like Queen Esther's is on one of the windows. So why are their names written on the windows? In memory, or if they give money to, to donate to give money for the, for the windows or anything. Uh, so they do, this one over here has Murphy's, who was one of the first members. Yep. And over here we have Sarah the Shawls, okay. who's a great grand, her granddaughter still goes to church here. She's up in age, but she still goes to church here. That's great. So, you know, and that's, it's nice to see those names. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. I would love that. Yeah. All right, well, Diane, thank you very much for being able to talk with us today about this beautiful structure, about the things that have happened in the past, the things that are happening today. And uh, yeah, you did wonderful. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for coming. Thank you for watching another episode of History in Your Own Backyard. I'm your host, Susie Salik, today here in Glenwood, Indiana. Diane, thank you again for having us here. It was absolutely okay. beautiful. And remember, travel slowly, slowly and stop, stop often. often. Bye for Bye. now. Mm -hmm.